Winter is about to unleash major Arctic air into the United States, causing significant impacts. We'll be seeing a bomb cyclone explode over the Midwest and Great Lakes tomorrow, where one to two feet of snowfall and even blizzard conditions are possible. And even severe thunderstorms underneath all of this as this monster storm rolls through. Once this Arctic blast fully sets in, we will be seeing other snowstorms moving through the central and eastern United States as well. And we even eventually start to see signals for major nor'easter snowstorms along the east coast later on. Let's just dive into things and we're taking a look here at our jet stream where we can really see this trough moving in with this major bomb cyclone, which is going to drop 24 millibars within 24 hours, which is bombogenesis. Really, really crazy stuff. This is going to bring potential blizzard conditions, but we'll talk about this storm later on. But I really want to start to key in on these troughs in the east and that vertical jet stream up the east coast that we eventually see. We can still see a descending jet stream into the east, which again is going to point towards colder temperatures. And after New Year's, we get another major trough. And then this is our first little signal of a very, very vertical jet stream up the east coast with this really cold air over the northeast and mid-Atlantic and that vertical jet stream up the east coast you can get these nor'easter, major nor'easter snowstorms. That trough kind of moves out and we see another one set up here around the 5th, 6th, 7th and look at how vertical that jet stream is again. Looking at the GFS model here, we can see one of these nor'easter signals that really comes together on this instance. We can see the ridge in the west, trough in the east and then this more vertical look. This is for Wednesday the 7th of January, a little bit far out and we can see there's a low center that wants to move up along this. So let's see what happens as we move forward. It really wraps around and it gets this very straight vertical vertical jet stream up the east coast and path really wintry potential up and down this eastern area uh, we even see later on we don't get it to come together but we have that same kind of vertical profile here and then a low just offshore so again that potential does continue and it rolls into the more mid january time frame what you're watching right now, I actually decided to add in after I edited the entire video outside of this part because our newest 12Z European model run from today on December 27th shows two major nor'easters as it really starts to come together with this type of pattern later on. So I did want to add this today just because I made the video before the 12Z was out and I saw how crazy it was. We can really see nor'easter number one right around when the GFS model has one as well on the 7th here of 6th through 7th of January, I would say, we get this low, very strong, 978 right here. And we're seeing snowfall to different extents from North Carolina, Tennessee, northward, all the way through the mid-Atlantic and northeast here. And you can see this one really, really hammers uh, New England as it gets closer there. And we actually see a second one come together right at the end of the model run around the 10th, 11th, which is very far out to take it with a grain of salt. But this is another classic type of East Coast system right here, just offshore of the mid-Atlantic, bringing wintry weather to some of the mid-Atlantic and even into the northeast. Northeast. Total snowfall with these two storms in mind would be massive for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Between the two of them, one to two feet for most of these areas with even two, maybe even three feet for uh, areas up there near Boston, Eastern Massachusetts. So absolutely insane model run. Now let's kind of key in on the upcoming pattern a lot sooner though. We're going to talk about this Arctic blast moving in as well as that bomb cyclone. The biggest factor here is we have this colder air moving in. We can see it really, really ripping through. We can tell that we have this very intense bowed out look to that cold front. Uh, and at this point, our low is somewhere over the Great Lakes and we are getting tons of snowfall in here. And we get this Arctic blast to fully move in by the time we're reaching the 30th here where we will have 10 to 15 degree below normal temperatures along all of the eastern states. Let's move on and see the impacts from this one 10 a.m. on Sunday here the 28th tomorrow and we do see this 1001 millibar low over Missouri this thing is going to be a 975 millibar low pressure center within 24 hours of this point so it is going to explode so we see it already occurring as this low moves over Chicago by 4 p.m. here Eastern on Sunday and as we keep going a little bit further we see this low really really intensifying 985 there over the lower peninsula of Michigan and this is when we really start to see the heavy snowfall going uh, we see Minnesota Minnesota, Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan here seeing heavy, heavy snowfall and potentially gusts in the 40, 50, 60 mile per hour range or even higher. That is why I expect potential for blizzard conditions or at least near near blizzard conditions here. Meanwhile, underneath, we have a severe weather event ongoing. Right now, we have a marginal risk, but I think we could even get a slight risk here for this, where states like Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee 
Arkansas, maybe even northern Mississippi need to be watched for some damaging wind, maybe even a tornado or two. As this moves through, just look at this. This is 1 p.m. on Monday. We still have heavy snowfall for the upper peninsula of Michigan, now the lower peninsula of Michigan. And we have a 973 millibar low pressure center there over Canada. So this thing has just entirely bombed out, as we mentioned. And as we move on, that does eventually come to an end. Total snowfall for this storm, according to the European model, would be massive. Uh, up to a foot of snowfall for eastern, southeastern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, definitely the UP of Michigan, where I think the heaviest totals will come in. Two or even three feet of snowfall could occur here. And then a lot of the lower peninsula may be getting around 10 or 12 inches there on the northern edges. Anywhere in the gray is a dusting, if anything, maybe up to a couple of inches. Blues is two to six inches of snowfall, and then the purples are six to ten. And then again, the pinks is where we start to talk about ten plus. These pastels in the UP is where we're talking about feet, not inches. As we take a look at that severe weather threat as well, we'll talk about the other snowstorms soon. Uh, really, really seeing a lot of these frequent and in this pattern kind of like we've been seeing. And for tomorrow, this is Sunday into the overnight into Monday morning, we could see a large general thunderstorm risk area in the lighter greens where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So still heat every watch warning and advisory. We do see that level one marginal risk set up again for a lot of the deep south states, Midwest, and then into the Ohio Valley, where we're talking more about isolated severe weather reports coming in. There is a chance that that sets up more like a linear storm mode, and that would create a lot more wind driven uh, impacts. And I think that we're likely to get a slight risk upgrade here by the time we're reaching tomorrow, but we'll see what ends up happening. Looking at the temperatures, you might be wondering, like it's winter time, it's pretty far north for it, but we do climb up into the mid 60s, even as far northward as areas in uh, lower to central Illinois, lower to central Indiana. These areas are getting up into the 60s, which is really sufficient for severe weather. You don't need much higher than that. And when we look at the CAPE, which stands for Convective Available Potential Energy, this is thunderstorm fuel. That's all you need to know. So the more of this we have, the more potential for thunderstorms overall. Up through the deep south and then into Sunday, we see a lot of this for Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee. And as that line rolls through, it does come to an end in the overnight hours as the humidity and temperatures come down. So the simulated radar here, as of now, we start to see some thunderstorms and showers perhaps up there for northern Missouri, northern Illinois, but I don't expect that to be the main area to watch for for severe weather. It's really what sets up later here in this kind of underneath corridor. This is 3 p.m., this is the pocket we're watching of these thunderstorms developing for potential severe weather. And as we can see, it eventually becomes quite linear. And what I mean by that is it's just a line. This isn't scattered about discrete thunderstorms. This is a line of thunderstorms. And a lot of times these can set up with strong winds, especially when they're moving fast. And I do expect a lot of impacts like that, especially for northern Arkansas, southeastern Missouri, and into southern Illinois. Uh, and this will eventually reach into southern Indiana, as you can see. This is 8 p.m. here on Sunday, in through Kentucky. And then eventually that line does die down as we reach kind of the, the overnight of Sunday into Monday, the 29th here. Let's start to talk about some of our other snow threats, though. And we do see a clipper system moving through a lot of the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast just around New Year's. So here's New Year's Eve where we are seeing lake effect snowfall still ongoing, by the way. But here comes that clipper for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Michigan. It's starting out there uh, right around 10 p.m. New Year's Eve. And we see this continue for Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York as we're reaching the morning of New Year's Day, January 1st. A lot of this does continue into the evening as this low is somewhere around New York City here by this point, again, 7 p.m. New Year's Day. And we do see some snowfall still for West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and then up into New England. And that does come to an end, of course, although it does intensify a little bit offshore. Wouldn't be surprised to see Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts get a little bit more than everybody else once we're getting closer. But as we take a look at the total snowfall, it's a minor to moderate system. Two to six inches for most everybody in the blues here, which we can see a good streak of. There is some lake effect going on in there as well that could drive amounts up to six to 10 or even 10 inches plus for parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. And then we do see that heavier pocket offshore of Maine and Massachusetts and New Hampshire. If that heavier totals start to move a little bit further westward as that low intensifies, that could be an area to watch for maybe six to 10 inches uh, close to Southern Maine, coastal New Hampshire, eastern Massachusetts. Just putting you guys on notice for that. Let's just dive into the overall temperature pattern though with you guys. I want to roll through the whole thing as well as our entire European model run. So we're going to go through the overall pattern now for the entire thing. Obviously we had a historically warm Christmas. We do expect that to rapidly move out though. 
Uh, the reason why the severe weather is possible is because we have this severely warm temperatures and these really, really cold temperatures moving straight towards it. So when you get the very cold mixed with the very warm, you get the point. You know what kind of impacts that leads to. And then we see that fully take over for the 30th, as we mentioned. And that does last into New Year's Eve. Or New Year's, yeah, New Year's Eve here. New Year's Day, we start to see another Arctic air mass moving down, mostly impacting the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. This one doesn't get the same depth, but it is there, and it is more intense, actually, in this instance, for early January. We briefly warm up maybe for the 4th, 5th, 6th, but then we get more Arctic air moving in right here for the 6th, 7th, 8th. And again, that's right around when we're watching for those nor'easters to perhaps take place. We even get another Arctic blast starting to move down at the end of the model run for the 9th, 10th, 11th. So frequent Arctic air masses moving in. A more vertical jet stream that I can really say we've seen in probably two or three or four winters. So January looks exciting, guys. It really, really does. I'm super pumped for this. As we look at the just general storminess, again, we get this bomb cyclone really, really taking over for the Midwest Great Lakes. This is an intense system, maybe going to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest systems of our entire winter. Um, just pointing that out as well. We see that one roll through. And again, the clippers start to get going there for a lot of the Midwest Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Mid-Atlantic around New Year's. And afterwards, we get that same sort of action that we saw earlier in December. Here comes that other system for the 4th and 5th there, as you can see, and then we get more Arctic air. Right around that 5th, 6th is when we transition to where we're getting these lows climbing straight up offshore the East Coast. We have tons of Arctic air along the East. I mean, on this example, this is very far out, so take this with a grain of salt, but I mean, we see Arctic air, very cold temperatures to where lows are probably below freezing for areas in Southern Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina here. I mean, with this type of setup, we start to talk about things like last winter. It's so far out that obviously this is a detail that is very likely to change, but just pointing out what this model is showing as of now, we do see the Northeast really cashing on some heavy snowfall in this European model with another very intense system, 971 there. This would be likely a blizzard for New England with a nor'easter that close to Massachusetts and Maine, bringing heavy snowfall, probably strong winds. It's so far out though, but that does lead to those types of impacts. And then we do get other storms kind of climbing northward. This one's interesting right here. We get this low, heavy snowfall perhaps for the Midwest and Great Lakes, but I think more thunderstorms and severe weather underneath for the deep south, southeast, and even parts of Tennessee and Kentucky could be possible. So we see multiple threats for more severe weather as well, which by the way, in our Discord server, which you can find in the description and pinned comment down below, we're doing a year-long severe weather contest. So be sure to join. We're doing a trial run for tomorrow. So be sure to join today, get in and participate in that trial run, and then be a part of that year-long contest. It's going to be so awesome. Um, this might be one of our first events that we're really, really keying in on. We do see the Arctic air take back over at the end, and we do see more low pressure trying to develop offshore. So again, maybe continuing into mid to late January. Who knows what the future holds that far out, but it looks exciting so far. Total precipitation is dying down continuously out west. We still see uh, a lesser amount. It's still a decent amount, but it's just way less than what we were dealing with. And we continue to see an increase in the east where the deep south is getting a ton, the Great Lakes and Midwest and Ohio Valley and Northeast here seeing a ton. Uh, and then we see offshore of the east coast where on this model, most of the storms stay a little too far offshore. That's where we get a ton of precipitation, even six, eight, nine inches of precipitation just offshore of this east coast area. So tons and tons and tons of precipitation there. Looking at the total snowfall, we do get pounded uh, even for the mountainous west, despite the lack of precipitation, still seeing an average amount of snowfall at least. We obviously get crushed throughout many of these areas in the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, even some of the lower Midwest, Ohio Valley, parts of the Mid-Atlantic, and then into the Northeast, especially with multiple major systems. In these bluish shades, again, we're talking about feet, not inches. So this is a very snowy uh, pattern for these folks. With all that stuff being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.